Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. So it's been six months without my nan. Now, first of all, you may think, why do I capture this on my channel? Well, my channel is many, many things to me. But throughout this experience of losing my nan, I've, I've, I've had so many supportive messages, so many wonderful comments, real inspiring comments, and and so much thoughtfulness and so much care from people who don't even know me. And I find that incredible. And I think there's a lot of that what is missing from the world. And when we see that, when we experience that, just how wonderful, how wonderful is it that somebody who doesn't even know me reaches out to me to ask even just if I'm okay. I lost my nan on the 31st of May this year. My nan is literally my world. She is a best friend to me. And honestly, she is a second mother to me. I've been gifted in this life with incredible parents, an absolutely incredible mum and an incredible dad. My nan absolutely was, is, I always say is, because to me, my nan, even though it's been six months, the pain doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. And it's no time at all. It's no time at all. It feels like it was only yesterday. So very often I find myself saying was and then I correct myself is because to me, I'm never letting go. I'm never, ever letting go. I'm never, ever letting go at all. And I truly do believe that my nan, that my nan is there and she is guiding me and that she helps me through day to day. My nan was a very, very strong lady. Do you know when I say that, it, it, it's, I use that term was, and that causes me great pain. And I'm, and I'm real, tr I'm trying to put this into place now because I, of course I can't refer to my nan as being here because she's not. She's here always. And I truly do believe that my nan is in heaven and she's with my grandfather and she looks down on me. When I was a child growing up, my nan always worried that she wouldn't always be around for me growing up and or she wouldn't be able to enjoy me growing up and nan always said to me that i think the world of you my love and although i may never see you grow up i'll always be with you and i'll always be looking down on you so when i have those bad days and i do have them difficult days where it's it's difficult to even look past an hour let alone a day and then a lifetime what brings me comfort is that nan used to say that to me so very often I look out the window on a difficult day and I see usually a beautiful sky. Usually when I have these thoughts, it's usually like a beautiful sky. Or when I see an incredible sunset, I think to myself, do you know what? Nan is up there with the Lord and she's with my grandfather and she's looking down on me. And she get me through this. Six months is, as I say, no time at all. I do find myself, as we come into the Christmas season, Nan in our family was centre stage at Christmas. My nan was always, always, and I've got images of her now, always a very, very glamorous lady. My nan and my mum were very much like sisters, best friends, and then sort of mother and daughter, and a very, very incredible special bond, and whenever you were in that presence of that bond, you were blessed, and I was blessed to have, and to be able to call my nan, my nan is an absolute blessing. And and for my mum and for my dad also. I've been gifted with an amazing family. But it still doesn't take the fact that I haven't got my nan here to catch hold of her hand, to hug, to joke with, to love and to talk to. I find that very, very difficult. I can often be found, that's why I've done this picture on the front of this clip, just staring. Because to me, as we come into Christmas especially, all these memories come flooding back. All these things, all these, all these memories, these wonderful, beautiful, cherished memories I have. Memories of my nan at Christmas. I used to, me and nan used to do Christmas together and with the preparations of Christmas, I mean, together. And and it was, it was just, it was just so magical. It was wonderful. It really, really was. As I say, I've been gifted so much in this life. And I would help my nan get every, she has a very, very big family. And my nan used to send cards to every single grandchild. And she, with great grandchildren and great, great, great grandchildren, my nan had well over 50. So writing cards and putting money, she actually used to put money in all these cards as well and gifts for her, for her seven children. 
and <clears throat> and it was quite a quite a task. So I always used to help my nan with that, and I, I've got pictures even now as I'm talking. And I'm just going to show you. This is my dear nanny, and here she is. And I've got images of right now as we're talking. Me and my nan sat at her table in her dining room. Laughing and joking as the Christmas season approached us in Nan writing out Christmas cards. And I would always do my Nan's Christmas tree and with all sorts of decorations and things. And we'd we'd have some lovely evenings with movies and in all different foods and drinks. And, and it was really, really special. I have very, I have wonderful, wonderful memories. And if we ever went out for a day or if we went anywhere, I would, it would always be with my mum. So I'd have this incredible, I grew up in such an incredible loving environment and a loving bond. And now my nan is not here, I'm learning, I'm learning, and I am finding it difficult, and it is painful, and sometimes I find myself in floods of tears, sometimes I find myself with a chuckle or a giggle because I remember of what nan used to say in a situation, or a memory comes to my mind. My nan had a very good sense of humour, that she was a very, she could be stern, and she could, and she was a very, very strong willpowered lady. She was a very, very glamorous lady. As you walked, as my nan walked into a room, you would think it was a film star. You really, really would. And my mum is exactly the same. So the ladies of my family really have that sort of that wow. And and I've all, I always used to look at my nan in awe that nothing would get her down. Nothing ever would get her down. And if she was having a bad day, you wouldn't know it. You really would not know it. She dealt with a lot throughout her life, and she didn't have an easy life at all. She wasn't a very lucky lady. But what she had, she worked damn hard for, and that she was very, very proud of that family to my nan was everything through and through. I've learned so very, very much from my nan, and I'm still learning now as I explore and as I go from one day to the next, and memories come to me, and, and I look at my nan's picture, and I still feel her guiding me, still to this, still now, six months on, and, and I hope that lasts my lifetime. When I look at my mum sometimes, and, I, and I'm very careful, being it's her mother, my, my, when I'm looking and I'm talking to my mum, I, I do try to rein it in because, of course, I see the pain on my mum's face. It was her mother. And their bond was so incredibly spectacular. It sometimes, it would, honestly, that type of bond where you wouldn't have to say something, but one of them would already know it, or they could say absolutely anything and the other, and the other one would get it. Um... Yeah, so I do talk, I do talk about this, I do talk about how I'm feeling, um, and up until recently I used to tell my mum, and I used to speak to my mum about everything about this, but I could see it was almost starting to take a bit of a toll, that she was so emotionally trying to support me, that it was almost bringing her down a little bit. So what I've done recently is I've spoken to, and I reached out to the reverend of my nan's funeral service. I, I, I do believe in God, and I do have faith, and my nan did too. And I think actually that's where it came from. And I get a lot of comfort and I get a lot of direction from prayer and from the faith what my nan had and what I have. So I spent some time with the Reverend very recently and he and of course my thoughts and, and, and what I'm feeling did not go away. But he really helped me realise that this is normal for losing somebody you love. And you may think that that is simple, but honestly, I have felt like that my mind isn't my own. And it's been very, very difficult. So now my thoughts are almost like in boxes. They're not everywhere and taking over. They do take over sometimes, but they are more controlled, I would say. And and this kind of phase of grief and loss is really hard and it's different every single day. But for example, coming into Christmas, my nan had Alzheimer's and a very horrific illness, and my nan was robbed of her memories, and slowly of her abilities. But she still remained a very strong, robust, very... The amount of willpower that lady had is such an inspiration to me. Nothing would get her down. My nan would always be done up to the nines, would be in the most glamorous clothes, would still be done up to the nines. She used to have her hair done every week. She would still have her hair coloured. She always used to say to my mum, never let me dye a grey-haired old lady, or when I can't do it. And she even said to my mum, bless her heart, in my coffin, I would like to have my makeup on. 
And she made my mum promise to do that. So when my nan passed away, I done my nan's, I helped my mum with my nan's hair. And my mum done my nan's makeup whilst let it rest in my nan's coffin. And then my nan was done up to the nines, dressed exactly how she'd love to be, a star, an immaculate, absolute beautiful, beautiful star, which my nan was throughout her whole life. But, but throughout my nan's battle of her illness, we lost my nan at the age of 95. As we said in the, my nan's service, which the reverend spoke of, that my nan is at peace in her 95th year. So I know my nan was a very good age, but do you know what? It doesn't matter if my nan would have been 45, 65, 105, 125. How I lost my nan? I never ever expected in a million years that it would it would have happened. I was not prepared. I don't think you can be prepared. And still to this day, I have dreams and thoughts and I wake up in the middle of the night in a split second. I feel like I, I'm calling my nan or I feel I'm going to be meeting my nan or I'm going to be seeing her soon. And it's and it's so weird and it's so strange. I mean, I had a dream about 10 days ago now and it was it was incredible. It was a dream like I remember crystal clear and it was my nan and she called me. And my nan always called me either Bradley or Brad or my nan actually called me my babe. <laughs> And Nan would always address me as that. And um, she said that when we were going to town, my Nan always loved shopping. She was a very glamorous lady. She was always buying something and always done up to the nines like a star. And and my Nan, would, and my nan was asking me all these questions. And you know what? I woke up and I was so gut-wrenchingly sickened and saddened that I'd woke up because I was actually having a conversation with my Nan. And that had stopped. And, it, and it's and it's hard not being able to. I mean, my nan, in her last days of her illness, things were starting to progress and I could see things were getting difficult. But we'd have one of those days and the next time I'd see my nan, she would be, it would be back. It would be almost like this rainbow of my nan would be shining through. And yes, things were gradually getting more difficult. My nan battled Alzheimer's for many years, but... I always said to my always said to my nan and my mum, we, we stood together on this, me and my mum. And as my nan's memory failed, we became my nan's memory. We made sure that every season she knew, every event, everything which happened, she knew. So that's why the three of us had such a strong bond. Right from as a child, me and my twin brother, and we were and this up until we lost my nan, I had this incredible bond with my my nan, my mum, my twin brother, we had that real special and my eldest brother especially as well, he too visited my nan lots. But that that sort of immediate sort of golden treasure, you could say, was my nan, my mum and, and I. And and it's just six six months is no time at all. It, it really isn't. And it still feels like that I'm going to be seeing nan at the weekend. I used to see nan um, every week, sometimes twice a week, sometimes more. Um, and if I'm, if I'm going anywhere or anything like that at all, I'd always think, oh, Nan would like that, or I'll get that for Nan. And, and even up into the Christmas season, I still, um, even though my Nan was that age, she still loved Christmas. So I would always be buying my Nan lots and lots of all different gifts. Um, and, 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 and yeah, she spoiled us, we spoiled her. Um, so coming into Christmas, how I'm telling myself and how I'm dealing with this, why I'm not in floods of tears now, is my Nan went on 27 years this December, it would have been. Um, since she lost my grandfather, who she looked after and nursed, who had cancer and passed away to cancer. Um, and my nan went on all of that time as a strong lady she was. So the way I'm dealing with this, I could have either had my nan this Christmas, which I would have absolutely have loved. But now, she doesn't have to deal with Alzheimer's anymore. She's gone back to being nan how Nan would have wanted to have been, in her healthy mind, in her healthy way of life, in her healthy body and mind, before the Alzheimer's, with all her wonderful memories and all her wonderful life stored up in here, which we take so much for granted. 
that we spend our whole life leading these lives and worrying them, but yet an illness such as Alzheimer's can rob us of all of it. But Nan was so strong, and, and Nan always remained my Nan, no matter the strength she had was incredible. But when things started to change, my Nan was, was Nan. She was still always my Nan, my second mum, my best friend. So this Christmas, I'm thinking to myself that it's the first time in 27 years that my nan and granddad are going to spend it together with her daughter, my aunt in heaven, and her son, my uncle in heaven. And for the first time, they're going to be, especially my nan and my grandfather, will be together for the first time in 27 years. So that's pretty special. And that makes me feel like that it was nan's next step in life. God handled that for us. And I'm thankful for my nan's long life. I'd have given anything to have had her still here today. And some days I can put that into context and sometimes I can't. Yeah, it's tough. And as I'm talking to you, I'm looking at a picture of her. Yeah, this is my special nanny. And it's a mirrored frame, so it's difficult to see, but you can see how glamorous she is here. And this is very, very special to me, and it sits on my desk as I'm doing my filming here. Um, this is like my office area, as I call it. And, um, yeah, this is Nan. So she's with me here, here, so in my heart and my mind, in front of me all the time, looking down on me. <laughs> and, um... It gets me through the darkest of times. So going forward, I will be meeting with the Reverend who I've seen from my nan's funeral service recently. I'll be seeing him again in December. As we come into Christmas, um, there are moments where I feel very, very teared up and very broken. There is a lot of pain. It's still very early days. And, I, and you know, I will never, ever be the same. Never ever be the same. Um, I don't think you can be when you lose somebody who you love so much. But this life is a blessing, and I know my nan would want me to go on and make the most and make something special of my life, and that I intend to do. She always said that you'll be one to go far in this life, my love, and I'll always be with you and I'll be looking down on you. I gave my nan's eulogy at her funeral. I stood up in front of all of our family, and I went through my nan's whole life. In the last time when I went and see my nan in the chapel of rest, and I kissed my nan on the cheek, and I held her hand, and I prayed with her, I said to my nan, I'm not saying goodbye, because this isn't the end. We just can't hold hands anymore for a while. And that's how I truly feel, that until it's my time, after hopefully a very long life, then we'll meet again. Like Nana was used to say, that we'll all be together again. But for now, Nan sat at the table with the Lord, and she looks down on me, and that's how it, that's how it is going forward. Um, yeah, so it's tough, isn't it? It's tough to put into context, it's tough to comprehend, and it's real tough to tell your heart that. It really is. Um, so six months without Nan. Six months without Nan by my side. Six months without a hug from my Nan. That's hard. That's really hard. I miss her so much. Um, but, but yeah. I feel her, almost her presence, her guidance, guiding me, being stronger. She's my inspiration. What she faced throughout her whole life was incredible. And the person she was. So I try to take from that, and I try to learn from that, and I try to, I try to be inspired by that every single moment. Trying to be more like Nan. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. This is a very, very special clip to me. Nan is, is everything to me. Thank you for sharing this with me. And do you know what? I think Nan would want me to push on with Christmas. I've got a wonderful Christmas picture of me and my Nan. Um, and, and lots and lots of beautiful memories. So that's what I'm going to do. So my next clip, in fact, even after this, I may go in and do a clip on Christmas, because after all, it is starting 
to look a lot like Christmas. I think that's what Nan would want. I'm nearly done. I started all really, really early as well, Christmas, just like me and Nan used to. And my mum, we used to all do it together. But now, me and my mum um, do lots and lots together. And that's what we're, um, we've are we been doing now. We're nearly, nearly, on the 2nd of December, nearly, nearly finished. So all now the preparations of dressing the house and getting the house ready. So I like to think, and what's really wonderful, and a lot of people wouldn't necessarily like this, but we had my nan's ashes divided. And my nan always wanted to be scattered around my grandfather's memorial tree. She was claustrophobic, so she never ever wanted to be confined or anything, even in death. So we have half of my nan's ashes in a mother of pearl in brass urn, which sits on my mum's dressing unit in our lounge. And the other half are with my grandfather's ashes at a stone in the memorial garden in our local town where my nan lived um, and spent most of her life from when she came to our local town um, with the land army. My nan was a land girl, a land army, um, which she was very, very, very proud of. And I sincerely am very proud of. I wore my nan's land army badge at our funeral. So there's a little snippet there and a treasure of mine to share with you. And that's lovely because Nan, Nan is always a part of our home. She's always a part of me. She's always here. And she's always in the pictures. Thank you very much for sharing this with me. It's good to talk. It really is good to talk. And keeping, as my as friends and people and family members have said, if we keep talking about her, she will always she will always live on. And she does. And she does. She's probably looking down on me now, thinking, you poor, you poor soul, love. <laughs> but there we go. That was how my nan used to speak, bless her. Okay. So thank you very, very much for sharing this with me. And until next time, God bless. And I'll see you real soon. Thank you very much for being here. Take great care. Bye for now.